Hello, hola, and welcome to part two of my electronics marathon, where I'm doing mm. version 2.0 uh, of my amplifier. If you haven't seen part one yet, you can see it over, mm, let's choose a place, just choose a place over here. Yes, you can see it over there. <laughs> And that will fill you in on what I'm doing up until now. The link is also in the description in case you don't see the annotations or, you know, I look like a mad woman just like pointing in midair. Um, so anyway, I feel, I feel I've lost some footage somewhere actually, but anyway, I will present to you what I have. In this one, I will be concentrating more on the equalization, the amplification, basically the main board of it and getting it finished. Um, because I am up to that part now. So, yeah, let's begin. As I suspected, I did indeed lose some footage, quite a bit of it actually. The first half of my build is just gone. So I will have to fill you in along with the photographs which I'm so glad that I took along the way. I started building the main amplifier and planned on working backwards from there as it's always been the part which, you know, it's always been tricky during my experimentation and test stages. I did a big mistake though. Once I built it, the transistors I used were general purpose transistors with a TO92 casing, but they got a, you know they got hot and uh, I started getting uncomfortable with that because I don't want to open this thing up and start you know tinkering with it again, replacing transistors. As far as I know, there is no way to attach heat sinks to these. So I decided to make my own heat sinks with my pretty red reel of magnet wire. I cut pieces of it and merrily coiled it around a drill bit, happily creating springs which would later attach to the heads of the TO92 casing and dissipate the heat which they were giving off. At least there's something to dissipate it. That was, was, that, that's what was going through my head at the time. Those of you who are knowledgeable in electronics will probably know exactly what happened next <laughs> and why. Do freaking not do what I just did. Do not replicate the stupid idea of using these as heat sinks. Because I've just ruined my amplifier. Basically what I what just happened is that I put this on top of you know the the transistors and then what happened is I switched it on and I heard a lot of wee wee sounds and Especially when I move the volume uh, slider up and down, it just the sounds just freaking changed and they just burring. Basic, basically, what happened? Um, it was like it started uh, uh, showing signs of parasitic uh, oscillation in the circuit. So yeah, I, I messed it up by doing this. And no joke, when I kind of like put this slider up to the plus. I could faintly hear some voices. No, <laughs> I could faintly hear some voices uh, through the the speakers. So it was catching something, obviously, and very faintly. It was not. A, I almost turned this thing into a freaking radio. Basic. Oops. <laughs> Basically, what I think I've done by winding this magnet wire in a coil is effectively create an inductor. So I think I've done that. That's why I think has you know made this go all haywire. And now even after I take these off, I still have this stupid parasitic oscillation on this. So yeah, bad idea. Do not do this. But you know something? Uh, maybe, maybe we'll find out later that this is a blessing in disguise. This is all new to me, I'm learning. Oops, sorry. This is all new to me, I'm learning. I looked up some other transistors and ones which are not a power transistors, but 
are not as you know like mid-range sort of thing and the tip 42A which is a PNP <clears throat> and the 41A which is uh, the NPN I'm gonna try these now if it works with these then this thing this stupid thing that I, I just tried to do was a blessing in disguise <laughs> So yeah, we'll, I'll find, we'll find out, you know, just like keep watching the video and see if I've succeeded or not. Yeah, it's snowing outside and it's absolutely beautiful, even though it's a pain in the freaking neck <laughs> because um, it's hard to get around in it, but... So it's there, so let's just enjoy the beauty. Okay, thankfully adding these stupid things which ruined my previous resistors because I tried to use these as heat sinks but they ended up turning into freaking inductors <laughs> ended up um, you know, obviously replacing the resist uh, resistors, transistors but what then happened is that I ended up getting um, finding the right transistors and actually it was a blessing in disguise this thing is freaking amazing now um, okay, the volume is just this tiny bit I cannot put it up too high because it'll just this thing has a lot of power it's just these two What I need to do is first of all add heat sinks to these transistors. These two are okay, just these four, sorry, these four transistors because they do get hot. Um, this thing now draws, I'd say that is about 400 milliamps. I don't know how it's gonna last, we'll see later on, but this thing is powerful. I can, I mean, this is high. This is high impedance as well, so I'm gonna add more more of these speakers on. This thing is gonna be loud. Um, I need to add uh, resistors at the beginning so it doesn't overload the uh, the input. So I'm gonna add like 1K resistors right now. What I'm gonna do now is add the heat sinks because these do get a bit, you know, dusty. Okay, so this is just basically a silicon heat sink compound which I'm gonna use, which I used for my the computer build and I'm going to use for the next computer build too which will be coming very soon um, okay so you don't need too much of this just like a little blob of this because you know it's tiny okay this is just gone really hard no it's okay okay just like a little smudge Oops, these are backwards. So, the back of these. This one little so too much, too much, too much. You don't want to put too much of this stuff on. Uh, I touched it! Freaking. <laughs> I got silicone on my hands. Okay, it's okay, it's not, it's not exactly acid or something, is it? On this extremely cold, fluffy night, I am here doing, uh, yes, more electronics. <laughs> I'm just freaking gonna finish off this. I had against this thing for an hour because stupid things have been going wrong but I managed to like fall, the troubleshoot, fault find, everything I managed to finally do it and I've just found out something about the way I work I don't know why for some stupid reason all my projects end up like slowly falling down the side it's just like slowly the old waterfall down here I don't know why they keep doing that, I'm sick of pushing them here I must like subconsciously pull them towards me or something to kind of get a closer look but everything is working fine it's all done and as you can see it's working it's working very well the funny thing is though it's quiet
thing is the power requirement seems to vary for these for some reason it there's times when it you know it wants more and it won't work unless you put it up at a certain voltage and then there's other times where it'll work at the lower voltage so right for this circuit for this version 2.0 of <laughs> my headphone amplifier project uh, the, power, the power requirements have changed completely um, yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> it's like it's like 10 batteries now and not only that um, just in case I decide that I may need more this is too extra but this I think this should be fine um, actually this suggestion was from my brother you know just to add more batteries just because of the power requirements um, and I've just wholeheartedly taken it because it seemed to be the only way <laughs> I'm starting to I'm starting to realize why I call myself Miss Madeline <laughs> because this is just come on this is getting ridiculous especially if I put this on and I have two more I mean before was bad enough I had just this amount I had um, you know, 246 giving me 9 volts or if it's... I don't know, hold on did I have 246 or did I have more? yeah, I had, two for, I had 6 giving me a total of 9 volts or, you know, 7.5 volts because the rechargeables are 1.2 volts each um, I was considering putting an extra 2 on to give me you know, 10 volts from from rechargeables and from normal 1.5 alkalines, um, 12 volts, you know, 3, 6, 9, 12. But because of the power requirements, I ended up, you know, getting, <laughs> getting one of these. The thing is, this may seem crazy, but uh, first of all, any loops or any loop pro, whichever one you go for, uh, obviously any loop pro are better they have higher capacity um, these retain their charge so you, you know you can keep them for months and they will not lose their charge now the thing is uh, this you know each one of these is um, like 2000 milliamp hours basically 2 amp hours each one now putting all these together and my circuit takes depending on how it fluctuates it takes you know let's call it 600 milliamps so this is gonna last quite a long time before it you know decides to go poof and I have to recharge them all again but the thing is I know this is ridiculous uh, that's not the only option that I have the second option that I have that I have put on is external power and of course I have a choice I have a switch that I can just flick for external power or this obviously the external power I'm going to use a power supply with a little higher voltage so I can get more performance out of this however this thing gets a little hot <laughs> so I think what I might see if I can do is just put it Teeny weeny fan on <laughs> inside it just to kind of give it some air circulation and movement. Um, but otherwise, it's done. The only thing left to do now with all this is just one go over it all once again, check if there's any dry joints or anything like that, test it intensely before putting it and making a case for it and putting it inside it. But that's the next stage that's, that I'm gonna do is put put it inside uh, make a case for it on a decent one this time and put it inside because this thing is working amazingly well i need to take a photograph 